Good day and welcome. This is Terry Roberts with DMAI, that's Destination Marketing Association International. We're the trade association for Convention and Visitors Bureaus, also known as DMOs. We are very excited to have you here for our webinar today. And um, just a housekeeping note, we have Christine Shimasaki, uh, Shimo, who is monitoring our question board. So we will be taking questions at the end of the webinar. So as you think of them, go ahead and type them into the question box on your GoToWebinar panel. And then that way we can compile them and, and take them at the end. So um, please take advantage. And we also, if you're having any technical difficulties or issues, you can also type into your question box and we'll help you there as well. So today, we are headed down demystifying industry acronyms. And what's the difference between a DMO, a CVB, and a DMC? So before we get started, um, I'd like to make some introductions. First of all, I'd like to welcome our sponsor, Chris Wessel, with ePro Direct. And Chris will be introducing himself and talking a little bit about his company and their services at the end of our webinar. But first, I would like then to welcome our panelists for today. Please meet Annette Gregg. Annette is the Vice President of Corporate West for Allied PRA, which is a DMC. But Annette, I got to say, I think um, you might have the resume bio um, of the girl done it all or the gal done it all um, who still looks 16. So your extensive background in the meeting and hospitality industry is pretty impressive. I know you've worked as a corporate, an association, and a third-party meeting planner. You've also worked for two different CVBs or DMOs in, in roles both in sales and in services, and now you are working for a, a DMC, um, Allied PRA, which is headquartered in San Diego. So I know that you have also taught at several universities, and currently you are the program advisor in San Diego at San Diego State University's Meeting and Event certi uh, Certificate Program. And you had uh, a few honors this year year, Annette, in, in um, 2016, you were elected San Diego MPI's Planner of the Year. Congratulations on that. And also a Meetings Net change maker. So welcome, Annette. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Terry. I think this is a great topic. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, I think so, too. And um, we decided we landed on this topic, actually, because um, we have a quite a um, old web, uh, um, not webinar, quite an old article that's been around for a while called um, DMO CVB, um, DMC, What's the Difference? And it is our most read article on our blog at blog.empowerment.com. So we know there's a lot of interest. We know there's a lot of confusion. So today um, we hope that those who have logged on who might be looking for some expertise on a destination level um, and kind of trying to figure out whether they should contact a CVB, a DMO, or a DMC, that by the time we get done with our little primer here, they'll know exactly who to call for what. So we're going to um, power down trying to understand some of the unique roles and the structures of these entities, and then really kind of dig in a little to the funding models for these organizations, which I know is always confusing. And Annette, I know you and I really hope to um, if, if nothing else, that everyone walks away with really understanding how these multiple parties can work together for the benefit of their planners. Right. So, Annette, I laugh because um, this industry is really one that is filled with jargon. It, it certainly plagues us. And it's not unique, I guess, to um, the meeting planning world or certainly to the DMO, CBB, DMC world because many organizations and even many corporations bear their initials first, if you will. Um, our professional organizations in this industry follow suit PCMA, AASEE, IAEE, MPI, CIC, um, just to name a few. So. In fact, I think we're so steeped in acronyms, I think it's really interesting that the Convention Industry Council even provides a glossary um, that on their site that was developed by the Meetings, Convention, and Exhibits Exchange Programs, um, Accepted Practices Exchange, and they list more than 1,400 terms, acronyms, 
and abbreviations related to our industry. So, so we're not alone in this acronym soup, Annette, right? Right, and, and it's, uh, I looked at my, as you were reading my uh, bio, I was thinking about that, and I, having worked for two TVBs, a DMC, an association, and a university, I've definitely been around my fair share of acronyms, and it's one of the common themes that comes up uh, in the classes I teach, is that we have to start speaking a language that everyone understands. Absolutely. So, I, I'd like to begin um, by introducing, I guess, an acronym that most everyone is familiar with, the FAQ, or the Frequently Asked Questions. And when it comes to our industry, I think it most often resonates with, if I'm looking for that local destination expertise, do I need a DMO, a CVB, or a DMC? So essentially, I'd like to start by saying that the terms CVB and DMO are really interchangeable. Uh, referred to as CVBs for many decades, destination marketing organizations began identifying themselves as DMOs, I think in an effort to maybe um, first convey a little bit less bureaucratic connotation than bureau does, but also to more accurately um, reflect really their total marketing role in the destination. So many of the planners who are on the call might be familiar with naming conventions like Visit Denver or Meet Minneapolis or Travel or Discover as many of our DMOs have taken a portion of their name and, and made it more descriptive or more action-oriented, if you will. And in 2005, our own organization, DMAI, changed its name. We used to be the International Association of CVBs. And partly that was in recognition of our international members, to put the I in DMAI, but also, again, just to reflect that the destination marketing organization is an entity that is responsible for the marketing of the entire organization, both for meetings and conventions and leisure business, and really an economic engine for the destination. But Annette, as you know, changing a brand takes a really long time. So DMOs still refer to themselves as CVBs, and most often, Planners, when they are searching for help in a destination, um, are searching not for a DMO, but searching um, under the criteria of CVB. So that's why we in our industry continue to use DMO and CVB interchangeably. So Annette, I know a DMC is a destination management company, right? So right. you are you then are often a member or a partner of CVBs. So I know that PRA, for example, in San Diego is a, a partner stakeholder with the San Diego Tourism Authority. Mm -hmm. So right, right, and that that term DMC is something that we all categorize ourselves with. Uh, I know that there is conversation among our our fellow uh, TV, uh, DMCs that we that we need to make sure that people understand what that means. And so this webinar is, is a great example of that, that we need to demystify that. But if you're thinking about a brand new planner entering the marketplace, she may not know what a DMC is. So usually it comes with a, a description of what the heck does that mean. Exactly. So let's, let's break it down then. So I will begin by taking the CVB DMO role. So, I think it's kind of interesting historically that in 1896 there was a prominent Detroit journalist, his name was Milton Carmichael, and he first made the suggestion that local businessmen band together to promote the city as a convention destination and represent its many hotels to bid for business. And at the time, there were a lot of people that thought he was crazy to spend money to bring conventions to a city, and that that was quite and in a questionable endeavor. I think I always think about Milton and think that he is laughing from somewhere above today. So in 1914, so DMAI um, just celebrated a few years ago, two years ago, our hundredth anniversary. So um, as a trade association. So today there are approximately 4,200. DMOs, destination marketing organizations, globally around the world to help planners with their meetings, and approximately 1,400 of those are in the U.S. with 54 in Mexico. I think it is just essential that everyone understands that, again, that 
DMO CBD's mission is really the long-term development and marketing of the destination and that their focus is on convention sales, tourism marketing, and the services that can be provided. So I like to, you know, always explain to um, folks who are unfamiliar with CVBs um, or DMOs and their services that there really is an opportunity to reach out to someone in the destination way, way, way back at the beginning. So that's why I always say the, the first point of contact before you even put together your RFP as you begin to initially think about heading to a specific city or locale, whether you're familiar or unfamiliar, that the DMO can really begin to help you find exactly what you're looking for, regardless of the size meeting that you are representing. And that's, a, I guess, a misnomer or another misconception that plagues our industry is that CBBs or DMOs only help planners who plan large citywide events with multiple hotels that need member or that need a convention center space. So they're there for you to help you really see the destination as a whole kind of comprehensively before you start into um, talking to any one meetings provider. And more and more today, planners are looking to infuse that meeting with that local flavor, with that local expertise. And CBBs and DMOs can point you on the beaten path or off the beaten path as specific or as individual or as unique as you are trying to find um, enhancements for your meeting. And then we act, I think, as a conveyor or as a connector of relationships, introducing those um, who are vested in the meetings market to our meeting planners. So you might ask how many, um, you know, how influential is a, a DMO or a CBB in the meetings market? And we did a study. Uh, in 2014 revealing that CVBs or DMOs touched about one in four, over one in four room nights in, generated in their um, prospective destinations. And in 2014, DMOs booked a new high of 41 and a half million room nights for future events. So I think that that's a, really an important piece to understand in terms of that they're a major generator of economic value in their destination. So, so one of the things that comes up often is really the funding model. And DMOs and CVBs love to tout the fact that we're free and free to planners. And um, free is always an interesting connotation because I think everyone always walks away saying, well, nothing's free, right? And if something really is free, how much value can it have? And so we like to really differentiate to say that our, our services are free to planners because our nonprofit organizations are funded by stakeholders, by those who are vested in tourism in their destinations um, and through local tax assessments um, that are collected on behalf of the meetings and uh, marketing industry. So Annette, any thoughts, any questions there as we kind of talk about that uh, CVB funding model? No, I think it is uh, good to understand that that they they are have already really paid for the CVB services through their attendees and the TOT. So that's why CVBs are able to offer these as, as the marketing and services arm of a destination. It's, I always think of it as sort of like playing it forward, right? That the, yeah. the taxes from your group are you know they're being collected. Everyone that that meets or stays in a hotel in a destination very often tax assessments are being uh, collected and that they are funding these rich programs of resources for planners. Nice. So when we think about when we think about what CVBs and DMOs typically do in the marketplace, I think that um, it's pretty easy to identify, you know, maybe our big four, if you will, that CVBs have a reputation for being able to put together for planners who are unfamiliar with their destinations, you know, expert site inspections that are cohesive, that make sense, make sure they see all the right properties, um, put together the right local contacts and resources, help them again with that marketing arm to um, have attendance and, and promotion, um, and then also provide conference services in terms of um, all of the things that come with logistical support 
around bringing a meeting into a destination. But I think we're so much more than this. And when um, I was writing an article recently, I decided to you know, pull back and think about, I think of CMOs, CVB experts as really being consultants for their destinations. So I did a little research and pulled seven reasons why anyone across any business sector hires a consultant and the consultant business is a billion dollar industry a multi-billion dollar industry and the seven reasons that I was able to consistently to identify are listed here and I, I really took a look at this list and I thought wow all seven of these things are things that CVBs that DMOs really provide for their planner partners as they come into a destination and I think there's a couple that I would would really pull out. Number one, I would say that the DMO, the CVB, helps you, the planner, not constantly have to recreate the wheel. They've seen thousands and thousands of meetings come through their destinations with like organizations. They know what works. So you can really take advantage of that expertise and that specialized knowledge. And they know the best practices and the proven methodologies and really can help you become more strategic in your approach to planning your meeting, providing you with great data, analytics, um, seasonality, demand factors in the destination to kind of ease the frustration as you're trying to find availability. And then I think the last piece I would really, really stress is advocacy. You know, every day you pick up the paper, you read about a disaster, a security concern. Um, something that's happening that's reported in a in a media um, news release, and then you think, "Wow, you know, who could be in my in the destination? Who would always have their ear on the ground for me?" And I think that that is really a role of the DMO to be your advocate to help you as problems arise, or to maybe even circumvent issues from their expertise, but also that it's important kind of going back to the best first of first point of contact to really create that relationship with the DMO or the CVB before the need arises. It's always easier to have an advocate, I think, on the front end than being scrambling around trying to find that advocate after the problem or the situation has has already occurred. Mm -hmm. Hey Terry, I have a question for you. So would, would a CBD or a DMO help an event that doesn't use hotel room nights? You know, I think that that's a good question. It's a really good question, and it's one that comes up often. And, and really, it's part of a one-to-many, if you will, discussion. So obviously, CVBs, DMOs, to some degree, their um, resources are limited. So they have to put their resources in areas in which they can leverage the most, if you will, bang for their buck. So traditionally, DMOs, CVBs are helping um, to support and provide services for those events that do bring in um, overnight visitation to the destination. Um, that mm -hmm. being said, that being said, it's not a hard, fast yes or no. It's, it's always about the total economic impact of the event, um, but I will tell you that services are provided for um, events that require, you know, 20 or, or 30 room nights on peak. So again, it's, it's not um, a large citywide event that garners the attention or the services of a DMO. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. And how about a, an event or a meeting that's booked a hotel directly without using the CVB? Would the CVB still provide services for that? You know, that's another really fair question and one that probably often um, can um, change from destination to destination due to their funding. There is some, there are some destinations that would look at helping a planner who's already booked directly with a hotel as an opportunity to, um, you know, have a new connection and would be able to service that group as well. There are some that are restricted in terms of being able to service groups that they have not helped locate in the destination. So mm -hmm. again, I think my I think it would again kind of take me back to that last piece of 
you know, establish a relationship first. There's no reason that you can't make that connection and um, avail yourself to the services before you go direct to the hotel and, um, and then have the, the one-two punch of having the hotel. And, and as many times, like in a, in a situation in that, like I know you know that there might be a brand loyalty situation. Someone may be going into a destination and know, in fact, that they're going to use the Marriott. So they don't want to open it up to other searches. They can still go to the destination, um, the DMO, the CVB expert, and say, hey, I'm going to book the meeting at the Marriott, but I want to avail myself of your expertise in things to do outside the hotel. Um, you know, I might need a permit for something for an off-site venue. I might want to make a, a connection with someone like yourself, Annette. I might want to say, you know, we're going to need a lot of on-site help. Can you, can you connect me with some of your best DMCs in the area? So there's no reason mm -hmm. why, even if you know the hotel you're looking for, that you can't still avail the services. Got it. So, Annette, that kind of brings me to a question to you. So, I think at least hopefully I've cleared some of the air about what a DMO or a CBB provides. So, now hopefully that's a little bit more clear. When would I know or how would I know if I actually needed a DMC to become involved in my meeting? Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's important that I start with that, that the DMCs and the CDBs, they have the same goal, and that goal is to bring your meeting or event to that destination and have it be wildly successful, right? It, it only benefits us for you to have a rock star meeting or event while you're here, because then you'll tell others about it and how great your meeting was and, and what have you. So we're not competitors. We're definitely hand-in-hand, hand, kind of multiple pieces of the same puzzle. And we do work very seamlessly and very well in the destinations that I've been in, uh, as far as the two CVBs that I've worked for. So we are usually the members of the CVB um, as a DMC. We usually work with our CVB cohorts to get uh, information on what meetings or conventions are, are coming to town. Uh, we might help put together a site inspection for that client that's coming in. Uh, we give kind of inside scoop on special event venues, on certain activities, on things that, uh, that are new and hot. We'll keep the CVB updated and vice versa on those things. But I guess let me say that at the bottom uh, line, the, the time when you hand the baton off is when a planner needs more detailed involvement when their event is, has multiple suppliers involved, it needs maybe design work, it needs some strategy work and ongoing involvement, then you would need a DMC. Uh, so we're specialists in various aspects, especially activities, destination highlights and tours, themed special events, and unique settings. Uh, and then, of course, we do group transportation. So recently, we had a, an internal a customer survey, and we said, hey, why do you use us? Why do you use not only Allied PRA, but why is the DNC most valuable to you? And the four reasons that our clients uh, came up with is that their top four was operational expertise specific to that destination. So again, destination experts. Creativity, on-site logistical and operational excellence, and the fact that it saves time. So really, I think the easiest way to think about this is uh, we can start with the uh, definition of a DMC, and that is from our own association. Of course, we have one as well called the Association of Destination Management Executives, or ADME. And a DMC is a professional services company possessing extensive local knowledge, expertise, and resources, specializing in the design and implementation of events, activities, tours, transportation, and program logistics. So again, it's it's when you need the boots on the ground and you really need an extension of your event planning or meeting planning team. So our, here are some of our traditional services, the ones I mentioned, and now you're seeing DMCs being brought in for even some non-traditional services. So like Terry mentioned, some of you have relationships on a global level. You have uh, global salespeople that you work with at hotels. Uh, or you already know where your your meeting uh, needs to go because it's on rotation, things like that. Well, sometimes we're brought in at that level because we have multiple offices as well. Those of us that are in the DMC world that have a, a system like we do, we have 20 destinations across the U.S., we become 
uh, consultants at the level of choosing a destination sometimes because we have that expertise throughout the country. So sometimes we're brought in at the earlier level of a destination recommendation. We have some of our offices offering registration software and registration services because we've already normally provide registration staffing. So now we're brought in one step earlier saying, hey, can you run our, our website and our online registration software? Some of our offices are getting hired to do post-event uh, participation surveys and return on experience type analysis. So again, it's really the nature of the evolving business with meeting and event planners. So it's whatever they need. Some of our clients have had reductions in force, reductions in staff, and so they need to come to us for a deeper uh, suite of services than they've ever needed before. I think that's a key word, really. It's when the need becomes deeper, when it becomes more operational, when you really need someone now to carry out specific um, tasks and logistics for you um, in the destination of choice. So now let's talk about, Annette, if you would, the DMC funding model. Sure. So because we are really an extension, we're, we're event planners. So we're an extension of your operational team, your meeting and event team. So we are a professional service company, and that's why we charge. So you'll see a few different models, and we've adjusted to what our clients need. I'm sure our, all of our DMC uh, fellow partners have done the same thing. Where uh, normally, there, there's a normal um, model that you're probably used to with DMCs, which is a, a certain markup on services or markup on hard costs. Then you're seeing sometimes it's a straight uh, management fee where you're, you take a look at the scope of work and we assess how many hours or how much expertise is involved in that scope of work and we'll give you one lump sum as far as a management fee. Uh, and then again, sometimes it's line items. It really depends on what the client needs because sometimes we work with the end user corporation. Sometimes we work with a third party intermediary in front of house and they all come with different needs. But yes, there is a fee to our service. So Annette, I think that this brings to mind as, as I kind of move to our next graphic. I think one for me that really represents um, from a planner perspective how this all works. So since you've been on all sides of this, I wonder if you would really speak to the CVB, you know, DMO, DMC partnership, and then also other planning partners, third planning, uh, third party planners, GSOs or NSOs of brands, you know, how is their opportunity for overlap and, and how do all these people work together? Mm -hmm. Well, no, it's a great question, and that's why we're having this webinar. We don't want you, the meeting and event planner, to be confused, right? We want you to feel that you're fully supported in the destination. And sometimes that's for us on the supplier side to figure out. So sometimes you're just at the hotel, and you, just, you have a pretty complex program, but it's beyond what the convention services manager at the hotel can do. So she'll bring us in. And she'll bring us in for, to, to design a special event inside her ballroom, for example. Sometimes it's the same way with a convention services person at a CVB. If you've started with her, and every CVB is different as far as their bandwidth and their ability to, to provide the services. Um, and that, that makes sense, right? A smaller destination is probably going to have a smaller services staff than a larger destination. I've worked in a small CVB and, and a larger CVB. And so they'll know when to bring us in, when they realize, OK, this is bigger than what I can manage. This is actually multifaceted event needs. They need multiple suppliers. A DMC is really your orchestra leader for that destination. They have deep destination knowledge. They can get all the suppliers lined up you need, and they're going to save you time. That's, that's the value prop that we have as DMCs. So it really it is seamless on our end because there's a real um, natural ebb and flow. We're partner, we consider partner ourselves partners with all these different entities. I like to think of it as the planner sitting at the helm of the table. So if I would look at this graphic, I would look to the right to say those are the planner's hands with the idea and the pencil, right? Mm -hmm. Saying this is what I want to do, or this is what I think I want to do, or this is where I want to go, right? I've got this nucleus. And then 
all the people around the table, whether that be the hotel salesperson, the destination expert at the CVB or the DMC, um, perhaps there's a, a, a global salesperson from a brand involved. All these partners can sit around the table at the discretion of the meeting planner and work together to fulfill the needs. And I think that what, what you said earlier is that we are not competitors in the marketplace that the planner's coming into, but really collaborators in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, at their direction, um, we can really work seamlessly together to, to bring it all together. And I think what happens is sometimes they get involved at different points with different um, goals and objectives, and that it isn't transparent, They're, that it isn't transparent from the beginning who's being invited to the table. So I think my advice for any planner who wants this destination expertise, wants to involve a DMO, CVB early on, um, has a relationship with a third-party planner or global salesperson, wants to involve a DMO or a DMC at a, at a um, more logistical operational level, is bring everybody to the table together. Be very transparent about your goals, about who you've asked to help. And, and really, it behooves them all to, to join and, and to help you. I agree. I, I do like this graphic because I think, again, it's all pieces of the big successful puzzle. And I think if I had one wish list, Terry, it would be that the planner brings us in earlier because we can help, like you talked about, the advocacy piece from a CVB standpoint and sending any potential problems earlier we can do the same thing logistically. So a DMC can let you know why something may or not work, may or may not work at that particular venue, and if you're and if it's going to fit within your budget, and if it's going to achieve your objectives for the experience you want to build for your participants. The earlier we have those conversations, really, the better experience we can build, and that's what we all want. We want those participants to walk away with the night or time of their lives. Absolutely. Well, Annette, thank you. I hope that um, Shimo's been watching our question board, and I hope that we have um, some questions. I'd like to point everyone to DMAI's empowerment.com website in case you are thinking about a new destination or one you've been to before, and you want to start and get the ball rolling early with meeting a destination expert to help you. It's a great place to begin your search. Most of you will be concerned about your CMP credit for today. You will receive a follow-up email from us next week, so check your spam. Um, it will have both your uh, certificate of participation along with a link to the recording of the webinar. So if you found it useful and you'd like to share it with someone on your staff or a peer um, in your meeting planning world, we we'll hope you'll do that as well. So as Shimo is kind of putting together questions, so if you have any, type them in now. I'd like to introduce Chris Wessel. Chris is with ePro Direct, and Chris, so nice to have you today. Thank you so much, Terry and, and uh, Annette, and yourself, Terry. What a great job! I mean, you're, you're, these webinars are always so informative, and I, we really enjoy our partnership. So thank you very much. Um, I won't take long. Uh, just to give everybody an idea of who we are, the, the name of our company is ePro Direct. We're about uh, 15 years old now. We actually just passed our 15-year anniversary uh, last week. Um, we started then, and. Uh, as a, a hospitality marketing agency. And we, we essentially have two sides to our business. Um, number one is we help hotel uh, hotels, resorts, and destinations um, market themselves to our data. Uh, we have a database of about 80,000 uh, meeting planner subscribers. Um, but we help those uh, hotels and resorts and destinations market to our database in an effort to grow their group business and to bring uh, conferences and events to their hotels. Uh, and then the other side of that is, is we also help meetings and conferences, uh, meeting and conference organizers market their events to help grow their attendance. So that's kind of the marketing side of what we do. And about six years ago, we had uh, started in the app business as well. Uh, so we've been creating event apps now for the past six years. Um, that's been going really well. and, and um, uh, completely custom uh, custom event apps um, that that help the needs of both organizers as well as the attendees. Um, but we've been doing that for about six years now. So if anyone wants to learn a little bit more about us, uh, they can certainly visit our website. It's eprodirect.com. That's E-P-R-O-D-I-R-E-C-T.com. And if anyone wants to reach out to me directly, they're certainly welcome to. And that's chris.wessel at eprodirect.com. Thank you so much again, guys. Great job.
Thanks, Chris. Great. You're such a tremendous partner. Really nice to have you. So, Shimo, do you have any questions for Annette? Um, well, we have questions uh, perhaps for both of you. Um, the first question um, I think we kind of touched on um, in, in the dialogue back and forth with um, Annette and you, Terry, is really related to third parties and about the cost uh, especially. Is there um, any differences um, in how either a DMC or a CVB works with a planner that is related to cost to their clients um, if they are a third party? Annette, you want to start with that one? Sure, sure. Well, uh, it really depends on every, every relationship we have. So there are some uh, incentive houses and major meeting planning firms that we have uh, global agreements with, and so they might have a certain uh, preferred, we might be a certain preferred DMC for them, and so we might have a different pricing structure for them. But, uh, but in general, it's probably going to follow that same model, which is either a management fee uh, with services outlined, or, or a management fee with those direct costs outlined, or it's going to be a, uh, a markup on an overall cost. So whether or not you're the you're the end user, like a corporation, or you're the incentive house, we would we would price it in generally the same way, unless we have some overarching agreement with you. Good answer. Um, <laughs> how about uh, this is something that we we also touched on, but Lydia, you know, has a very specific question. She's got a a meeting that requires a lot of meeting space for a hundred. 50 to 200 people, but she's only booking like very small number of rooms, like four rooms for four nights. And so I, I imagine Lydia has a very difficult time often to try to figure out who is the best group to work with um, in helping her with placing that event. Terry, do you want to take that? Yeah, I would start, Lydia, by um, calling the, the CVB or the DMO and explaining the situation, that you do have an event that requires a lot of meeting space, does not really have any um, sub substantial room nights associated with it, and number one, are they, are they equipped to help you? Um, find meeting space. They may or they may not then, but they may be able to advise you to some local venues um, that really are um, space only driven um, that might be appropriate for your event. So they might be able to connect you with some, some event providers. They could also connect you with someone like Annette or at a DMC who would then be able to help you identify a venue for your meeting that would not require um, room nights. There is also a, a little slight possibility of an exception where someone like yourself can often find good space and that is when hotels in a destination have given a what we call a rooms only block to a large citywide convention and as a result they, they've got a, a lot of committed sleeping rooms and their space remains open so depending upon um, your program and what you're trying to do those are dates when sometimes what we call space intensive groups can can garner some some good hotel space and again a conversation with the DMO might be able to open a door for you to understand what those citywide dates are where you might be able to garner meeting space without sleeping rooms attached to it and Shimo I, I can comment on that too for us and the DNC side it's not necessarily about how many sleeping rooms they're taking. It's really about the scope of services and, and what they need done. Say it's a 12-person board meeting, right? And it's a real small event. It doesn't necessarily mean it's not high touch. It doesn't have multiple off-site events going on, uh, very exclusive uh, activities and experiential events for attendees. So we might still work with that uh, person. It just depends on what they're looking for. So we don't really evaluate it right off the bat by how many room nights they're taking. Um, another question is um, not to throw another acronym into the uh, mix, but if you're planning, um, Elise is asking if you're planning a conference in Europe, where is the best place to start? And Nettie, I thought, Annette, I thought maybe you could talk about where do PCOs uh, fit into this mix? Right, and that's another unique uh, unique animal. Uh, 
a professional, uh, is it convention management organization? Is that a PCO? Yes. For convention organizers. So they're almost a hybrid. I, I definitely would still start with your tourism board, uh, which is similar to a CVB. I'd start there. And then your PCO is going to be, again, a, a professional meeting planning convention organizer overseas that's going to be able to give you the logistical help you need. So again, you're going to probably need both those partners if you're going overseas. We did many of those meetings where we, we planned meetings sight unseen. The first time we were able to visit the venue is the, the move-in day. And we had to rely heavily on, on uh, destination experts in those two entities. And I, and I think that especially um, whether it's domestically or internationally, um, you know, uh, the, the convention bureau in a destination in Europe um, or whether it's here as a CVB, they're, they're referred to quite just slightly as convention bureaus uh, that fall under a tourist board. Um, and they're, they're, they work similarly to a convention and visitors bureau that you might find here in the U.S. Um, some of you have uh, asked about the whole where can you find a list of acronyms. Um, we would like to refer you to the Convention Industry Council's glossary because it has been a work of many different um, individuals from and representing the different aspects of the industry. And you can find that glossary at conventionindustry.org. Um, let's see if we have any other slides. Um, excuse me, any other uh, questions? Someone was just asking about the slides. And um, Terry, we do tell everyone that you'll receive um, not only the slides to this webinar, but also a replay. So a couple of you have mentioned that you came on late and that you would um, like to hear the recording again. So you'll receive that by Tuesday. Hey, Shima, and, a slide, I, and a slide share as well. So you'll actually have the slides. I'm sorry, hey, Annette, Shima, I cut you off. No, that's okay. I forgot to mention about ADNI and how that is where you can find uh, a list of DMCs, destination management companies that are that are have certified um, certified destination management professionals there. So I think I just would recommend that if you're looking for a DMC to use the ADNI website because those are ones that have passed. A, those people are trained credentials. Uh, they they're official, um, for lack of a better term. So I would start there if you're looking for a DMC. Excellent. And then um, another update that came across the uh, question board is that Elise, thank you very much. She talked about the APEX will be, which is part of the Convention Industry Council, will be sending up the new dictionary or glossary and it'll be uploaded in January. Um, and then one last question, I think, Terry, that would be good to cover off on. And then in the question Michael's asking is, can the CVB help market? the meeting locally. And maybe, you know, they're from two aspects. Um, we could cover off on maybe help with finding exhibitors and businesses or even attendees. How Absolutely. Shima, that's such a great question and, and a great question, Michael. I think that um, typically um, the CVB is going to help you with all things promotional. Um, and one thing would be access to, you know, sort of that destination's intellectual capital. So who's like-minded in the destination? Who's doing the same kind of business that you're doing? What organizations might you reach out to for local attendees who would be interested in your meeting? Um, so that, that is definitely an expertise of the CVB. And I would really um, encourage you to, to ask that question. Now, who can you connect me with in the destination? What organizations? are like-minded, what um, companies are doing business that is similar, and, um, and what kind of media presence and awareness can you give to our conference that is coming in to make locals more aware of the day opportunities for attendance. And Terry, I, I have just one comment uh, myself, and that is I really liked the uh, graphic that you had up with all, all the people around the table. And I think that um, convening uh, the PCMA in their uh, promotion for the upcoming Convening Leaders uh, Convention in January has been publishing some 
really great content. And one of them is um, called Webisode 4, and it's titled Making the Host Destination Have a Bigger Impact on Your Attendees. And it is all about collaborating and getting together early and on the front end as you begin planning and thinking because what has been very, very interesting as planners are looking to better create the experience for their attendees beyond just what might happen in a meeting room, but thinking more comprehensively about that complete experience of the event, they're finding a lot of different unique ways about how to really embrace what the destination offers. And your DMC and your CVB or DMO is really going to be able to help really expand the experience um, of your meeting. Yeah, those PCMA um, videos are really cool, Shimo. And I know as, as we're getting ready for January to roll around when they'll be meeting in Austin, we'll, we'll be seeing more of them. But I like to, I love to think in terms of analogies. And the way I really look at this whole CVB, DMO, DMC, getting the right kind of expertise is that many times meeting professionals start their search in a destination, in my opinion, at the bottom of the funnel which is with rates, dates, and space. I need this kind of space. I need these dates. I need this rates. And, you know, really, that's all appropriate information to be looking for, but it's, it's really kind of down at the bottom of the funnel as opposed to kind of starting this conversation about what your meeting is about and what you're trying to accomplish and who you're trying mm -hmm. to inspire and what is the flavor and the mood and the tone. Like, if we started with those conversations and then filtered down to, okay, now, you know, let's talk about the rate states and space, everyone would be planning much more dynamic meetings and events. Absolutely, Terry. I mean, if we even, and to take it a step further, if we have a conversation about what do you want your participants to think for yeah. you about this event or this meeting or this convention, what do you want to, what would success look like, you know, for your participants? I agree with you. And then the logistics follow all of that. All right, so, you know, start with a conversation that's much more high level and then get into conversations that are much more granular. And I know in this time compressed environment that we always work in, we know we want to just go straight to the bottom line. And, and very often if we step back, we identify resources and opportunities that we would have missed when we go so granular so quickly. So Annette, I can't thank you enough. Um, you're a great partner, uh, a wonderful friend, and we really appreciate your participation in our webinar today. Thank you. We have very high registration. We look forward to sending out um, the follow-up information. Again, check your spam next week. That's where it often ends up um, for the recording, the slide share, and then uh, we'll have a link in there for you to register for next month's webinar, which will again be on the third Thursday in October. And we're going to be talking about post-event reporting and how critical that is to the future success of your meeting. So we hope you'll join us again next month. All right, everyone, take care and have a wonderful day.